Today, we're going to paint inside VS Code. That's right, there's an extension that allows you to edit images inside VS Code. Luna Paint is an image editor inside VS Code created by Daniel Imes. It's relatively new and is in preview. It supports PNG, BMP, JPEG, and newly added ICO support. Because this is an early preview, some features that you would expect from an image editor may be missing or limited. Some key points are that it uses WebGL, so it's very performant. You can add layers with blending modes. It has all of the standard tools such as pin, eraser, eyedropper, fill, select, rectangle, and zoom. It supports hot exit, which means that if you close VS Code without saving, it will restore unsaved changes. This currently only works on smaller images. One note is the ICO support is new and currently read only. Support for editing and saving will be coming soon. So again, this is a preview extension is actively being developed. So there may be some features missing or small bugs here and there. So once you have it installed, we can just open an image. And now we could edit it. To create a new blank image, we can open the command palette and search for Luna new image. Then we enter the width, let's say 36, and the height by 36. So on the left side, we have all of our tools and selected is the pencil tool. So of course we can draw with the left click is gonna be your primary color and then right click will be your secondary color. Now, if we hold down the shift key, it will actually give us either straight lines or an angle and it actually tells us what angle it's going to draw at. So if we wanna go at a 45 degree angle, there we go. And then we hold shift down again, it will show us the next line. Or again, we can just freehand it. We can also adjust the blend mode, so normal. And then we have all of these other blend modes like multiply, darken, lighten, overlay, and so on. One thing that I did notice is that there is no way to change the brush size. So I'm sure that's a feature that will be coming soon. We go back to our tools, we have an eraser, and of course, you know, the eraser is going to erase. Now it erases everything, including the background. Now for the eraser though, there is a brush size. So we could increase that up a bit and erase the entire picture. And now we have nothing. Now back in our tools, we have the fill, and this has flood modes, so contiguous and global and then a tolerance. So if we click here, it's gonna fill everything with white. Now if I right click, it'll fill everything with black, that's our secondary color. And then if we go in and let's just make some dots here, kind of make an outline of something. And now go back to fill and let's choose a different color. We'll say this blue here. And now it will only fill this inside. But let's undo that. And if we change this back to global, then it's gonna fill everything that's black. Now in our tools at the top left here, we have our selection tool. We can use this to select a portion of our image. Or if we wanna select the entire image, we can just press Control A. But let's just select a portion of the image. If we want to change our selection, we can go back over here and select the move selection. This will allow us to move the actual selection, but not the pixels. And we can resize the selection. If we select the move pixels tool, that will actually move the pixels that are selected or resize the pixels that are selected. Lastly, if we want to quickly crop a portion of the image, we can select the portion that we want to crop and then press Control Shift X. And so that will crop the image to the selection. In our tools, we also have the rectangle tool. And of course, this will draw a freehand rectangle, uh, or if we hold down the Shift key, it will make it a perfect square. And with this, we have our blend modes as well that we can choose from. Also the style is outline, fill, or both fill and outline. And then for the outline, we can choose the outline size. We also have a zoom tool. So if we select that, left click will zoom in and right click will zoom out. Alternatively, you can just use your mouse wheel. So hold down the control key, mouse in and out. And the last tool here is our eyedropper or color picker. We can choose a color that we want to set as our primary or as our secondary by left clicking or right clicking. And something that I found very interesting is that if you want to get a larger sample area, we can change the sampling from point to an average of pixel size. So if we select five by five, now we have a larger sample area. And this is now going to give us the average color of this area. At the bottom left, we have our color palette, of course. 
we have our primary color, secondary color, and then some predefined color swatches that we can pick from. Of course, we can customize these, and it does include transparency. On the left side, we can see layers here. So currently we have one layer, we can add another layer. On this new layer, we can draw again on top of this, and we'll see it here in our mini map. We can move layers up and down, we can merge layers, delete layers, show and hide layers with the checkbox here. And then on top of layers, we have our history. And to undo the last action, you can quickly just press Control Z. But if you want to undo several actions at once, we can just look at the history here, and we can go all the way back to the beginning if we wanted. Now at the bottom right, we have our mini map. And so this comes in handy when we're zooming into an image. It allows us to quickly navigate the image and see the final image preview. So let's just draw something in here. And then as we zoom in, we can now move around our image very easily with this mini map. We can even use our scroll wheel here to zoom in and out. So if we need to edit something in more detail, we can just zoom in. Now there are a few extra commands that are in the command palette. So if we open up the command palette and we search for Luna, or we could quickly get to it by pressing the menu here. So in this menu, we can see we can invert colors, we can change the canvas size, we can resize, rotate, flip horizontally and vertically, resize the canvas and create a new image. So one thing that we could use this for is to take a quick screenshot and then mark it up. So to do that, let's take a screenshot. So I'm gonna press Alt Print Screen. And then we'd have to go into the command palette, say Luna new image, and then give it the image size of your screen. Mine is 2560 by 1440. And then we could paste in our screenshot and then mark it up as needed. But we can make this process much easier with a custom key binding. So let's start over. So let's go to our key bindings. We'll go to our manage cog and then keyboard shortcuts. And then let's open the JSON version of this. So I've added a custom key binding. The key that we're going to use is control L for Luna. The command is going to be luna.file.new. And then we can pass in our args, which is our width and our height. So for me, it's 2560 by 1440. So now we can just press control L to create a new Luna image and then control V to paste our screenshot. So let's do that. Back here, control L, control V. There we go. Now we can mark it up. So this is a really cool VS Code extension for quick image edits and even more complex edits. So give it a try and let me know what you use it to create. That's gonna be it for this video. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.